seated if you would. Hey, let's thank our worship team for leading us out this morning. As you can tell, we have a couple of additions. We've got uh, two young ladies that I had the joy of, of being their youth pastor. Still am your youth pastor, uh, Haley and Catherine. We, I love these young ladies. And I want to say, youth pastor, I got to be a, a life group leader for a season in their life. And, uh, and I tell you what, they, they love Jesus and they love worshiping. And uh, I'm just so grateful to be able to minister alongside of you guys uh, today, this morning. Hey, listen, everybody all right? How, how'd you sleep last night? Let's do this. You ready? Everybody put out your hand like this. If you slept really good, let's go up. If you hate your life right now, let's go down. Let's see. Everybody go. Show me. All right, some pretty good. Somebody's in the middle. Oh, your hand's shaking. That's not good. Um, all right. Hey, cool. Hey, I'm so glad you guys made it out. This Really, you had no other choice but to be here. But uh, I am so grateful that you guys made it out this morning. And I'm excited about this morning session. It'll be a little shorter, uh, but um, which, why was that not met with great cheers? Hey, it's going to be a little bit shorter. All right. Bunch of, okay, anyway, so I'm excited about where we're going to go today. I really want to celebrate what, what God did last night in, in many of your hearts. And for those of you guys who were saved and so you began your journey in abiding in Jesus, man, we celebrate that. This is your first full day of new life in Christ, and we are so excited about that. And, and for believers who came up here last night and you just uh, said, I mean, listen, above all else, I want to abide in Jesus like I never have before. Man, we celebrate that, and today we're going we're gonna to kind of journey on how do we, how do we really abide in, in Christ. Now, I want to open up this way. We have a passage up on the screen. This is our passage for the week in 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. Right, let's look at it again. It says this, whoever keeps his commandments, meaning Jesus, abides in God. Remember the word abide means to what? Live in, right? Lives in in God and God in him. So it's the idea that, that when we abide in Jesus, God abides in us. And it's this cool picture that we get a chance to live out in our lives. And we kind of focused in on the word commandments. Uh, yes, last night, right? We focused in on words that we really don't like oftentimes, but honestly, we, we can criticize God's commandments and be like, man, that's not for me. I wish it was never there, all that good stuff. Or we could cherish it because we know that God put those in place to protect us from the most devastating force in all the planet in our life. What is that? It's sin, right? And so we begin to cherish the commandments of God. But how is it that we step from there and we begin to abide? Well, I, I want to share another story with you, if I can, about my bus adventures. Three months in, three wrecks in, all that good stuff. There's this young lady named Mackenzie who sat always near the back of the bus. She was the first girl almost that we picked up every day, her and her brothers, and then she was one of the last ones we let off. Mackenzie was an awesome young lady. But she never wanted to sit down on the bus, okay? Now listen, remember the roads. I, I traveled on my ginormous bus, right? They were very small, not enough room for any other cars but me on the road. Literally, if a car came on the road, they would have to back up and pull into a driveway because we couldn't both pass at the same time. Curvy roads, terrible rocks, cliff to death on the side, right? And so we have this huge scenario. Well, it was bound to happen literally every day. I'd be like this, Mackenzie, sit down. Mackenzie, sit down. Every day, multiple times a day, Mackenzie just could not sit down. She loved to talk with everybody on the bus, and she was just up this way and that way. She was in intermediate school, and, but I loved her. She's a sweet girl, but she just wouldn't sit down. I'll never forget going about 40 miles an hour on this road, getting kids home. She's one of the last ones on there, and I look in that huge mirror in front of me, and Mackenzie's standing up, and before I could get little speaker phone, a car comes barreling around the corner. And I did what any good bus driver does. I screamed and I slammed on my brakes. I mean, as hard as, I was not going to die, right? I was going to live that day. And so I screamed, I slammed on my brakes, I, I turned the wheel, and, and I'll never forget what happened next. In my peripheral vision, there was just this whoosh just this object that moved and I really didn't know what happened and the bus came to a complete stop and, and, I, and I begin to think what, what was that that I just saw you know what it was right it was McKenzie who traveled from the back of the bus to the front of the bus going about 50 miles an hour and smashed into my dash it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen 
Uh, it was the coolest moment of all my bus driving career. And here, and here I, I realized what had happened. I heard the bang, and I looked down in the little steps, like the little uh, step wells. The, the, and she was there. And you know what she was doing? Twitching. <laughs> and, and she was doing this with her voice. So I, everybody stopped. Everybody else is in their seat. I looked down, and I went, Kenzie, you all right? And she went, Aah. All right, stay there. And I drove her to her house. And I left her in the wheel well. I drove her to her house. And literally, she finally picked herself up out of the wheel well. And you know what she did? That's all she did the whole time. And, and, and I'll never forget. I said, are you okay? You're living? All she said, yeah. And then she left and went to her house. You know what was amazing the next day what happened on the school bus? Guess what Kenzie never did again? She never stood up on the bus. Why? Because she had a near-death experience. Because she just wouldn't listen when I said, I want you to stay on the bus. Here, here's the deal this morning. Here's what this morning is going to serve as. It's going to serve as this reminder that you and I have the tendency to stand up on the bus when it comes to abiding in Jesus. What, what do you mean? You and I have the tendency in our life to go like this. I, man, I mean, I know what's right for me in Jesus. I know what's right for me in my everyday walk with Jesus Christ, but, but, but I'm going to kind of stand up against it. I'm not going to go that way. And we have the tendency to do that in, in, with our lives. But here's what I, my, my hope is this weekend, is that you and I will have a bus life-changing experience, like McKenzie did, that we'll kind of stop everything, hit the dash, and just say, you know what? Man, I know there ought, there, there's some things I ought to be doing in my walk with Jesus. And, and I'm going to start doing those. So this morning, we're going to teach you what it is to abide in Jesus. Now, let's go to our passage we camped out on because 1 John chapter 3 looks an awful lot like what Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And we got that passage up there if we could, brother. I think. Is it there? I believe in you. Well, hey, we've got this memorized, right? It's okay. If he can't, almost there. Okay, Matthew chapter 2, uh, 22, verse 37. Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? And what did Jesus answer? That you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. Like He's saying this, love God with your everything. And I love that thought line, that we're to love God with our everything. But here's the problem. That, that's, where, that's where abiding begins that's a very difficult thing for us to grab hold of. A very difficult thing for us to grab hold of. Now, yesterday we talked about this, that there's two of us in here. There are those who are abiding in Jesus, we are abiding in Him, and there's those of us who are hiding from God. So, so one leads to life, the other leads to death, right? Remember this whole conversation we had last night. And so for the person who's in Christ, you are abiding in, in Jesus. And for those of you who are not in Christ, you are hiding from God. And so the call this morning is that if we're going to love God with everything, what does it look like for you and I to really do that, to abide in Jesus Christ? Now, hey, Zach, are you in the house? Zachary Carl, is he out back smoking? Anyway. He might be out back smoking. Let's see. He might, I, I want him to, I want to borrow him for a second. If he's here, he's, he, he'll come in just a moment. I bet you he's, he's going to listen. So as soon as I see him, I'll get him to do something for me. But one of the things that I, I begin to think through is this, is Jesus would quote um, the Shema. And you guys, we've already talked about this in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. When Jesus was asked what was his greatest commandment, he quotes the Deuteronomy chapter 6 passage, right? The Shema. Hear, O Israel. That's the Hebrew word Shema, to hear. And it's not only this idea of letting things come into your ears, right? It's this idea of a call to action. Not only do we hear what God says, but it's a call to action to do what God says. So hear, O Israel, that the Lord your God, He is one. And what does it say? And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. And so here we find that Jesus quotes the most famous of all Old Testament passages that Jews to this day have memorized, that Jewish people to this day still pray through two times a day, and that if you and I were to go to synagogue today, guess what? We would hear the Shema spoken. And Jesus says this, that the greatest of all commandments is the Shema. And what I thought we could do for the next few minutes is that we could talk about what it looks like even just through this prayer for you and I 
to abide in Jesus. And then we're going to end this morning with a really cool opportunity. Now, now we, we've talked about abiding in Jesus, right? And last night, and Zach's going to do something. I, I've written a song that I think kind of shows us this strain that you and I are going to struggle with as we talk about abiding in Jesus today and what it looks like in our everyday, right? I believe that sometimes this is the song that I've written is where you and I are. Now, if you've been to church ever, this is going to sound a little bit familiar to you. And, and hey, partner back there, we got the lyrics up on the screen, okay? But Zach, lead us out. I surrender some. Do you know it, guys? Would you sing this out with me? I Come on. surrender some. And this is where most of us are in, with our walk with Christ. Some to thee, my right? blessed sing it out, church. Savior. I surrender. Now, okay, now, now here, here's the deal. This is genius writing on my behalf, but, but here, here's the problem when it comes to this conversation of abiding in Jesus. We, we really struggle with loving Him with everything. It, like, remember what we talked about last night? It's, it's, we like, we, we want to love you with some of our heart, but not all of our heart. We want to love you with some of our things, and not all of our things. We want to love you with some of our relationships, but not all of our relationships. We want to love you with some of our lives, but not all of our lives. And so what happens is, is, is we kind of settle off and live every day in this idea that, Jesus, I'm just going to surrender some today. Well, from Deuteronomy chapter 6 to Matthew chapter 22 to 1 John chapter 3, this is never the picture of God's best for your life and my life. This is never the picture of what it is really to abide in Jesus. So for you and I to live this type of life that says, God, I surrender some, is for you and I to avoid Jesus in some of the areas of our life. And let me promise you what happens when you and I live and I surrender some. I mean, we are robbed of our joy of Jesus. Fear. Anxiety and uncertainty begin to fill our lives. Sin begins to grab hold of our attention. And we begin to lose our way. And so what happens is, is that we come to places in times like this where we can learn what it is to truly abide and walk with Jesus so that we can move from I surrender some to take it away, Brother Zach. And I surrender all. See, this is the heartbeat of abiding. I surrender Surrendering everything you have to Jesus. All. And all to Thee, my Church, blessed hear me. This is God's will for your life. This is what abiding looks I like. I And so here's my question to you. Right here. What if, honestly, you left our time together and the song on your heart is, Jesus, I surrender all. I'm going to abide in you with all that I have. How much different would your life look? How much different would your relationships look? How about your relationship with your mom or your dad? Or whoever plays that role in your life? How about your relationship with your siblings? How about your relationship with a boyfriend or a girlfriend? How, how about your relationship with somebody you can't stand? How, how about your relationship with somebody you would never even consider talking to? How about your relationship with one another in the life of this church? How, how much could a song like this change it? How, how, much, how much could abiding in Christ change what you look at on the internet? Or how you use your phone? But what if, what if this type of song would be played through your life and abiding in Jesus every day? How strong would sin really look in your life? And so as we look at Matthew chapter 22, as we look at the Shema in Deuteronomy chapter, um, chapter 6, and we begin to learn what it is to abide in Jesus, I want to say this, that when we abide in Jesus, here's one of the first things we do. You ready? We realize that we are nothing and can do nothing without Jesus. If you're taking notes, um, John chapter 15 verse 5 says this. 
Um, Jesus says, he's teaching his disciples as they walk along a vineyard. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Hey, listen, if you're sitting here today and going, Anthony, listen, last night I committed, I want to abide in Jesus with my everything. You know what? Here's what you got to realize when you abide in Jesus, that you can do nothing without him. That you can do nothing without him. And here's something I jotted down. You ready? When we realize we can do nothing without him, that is when he begins to do something in and through us. Anthony, how do I abide in Jesus? Realize you could do nothing without him. You can do nothing without him. I love this too. When it comes to abiding, we learn from the Shema that, that the abiding is fueled by prayer. And I jotted this down. The little value that you and I put on prayer is evidenced by how little we pray. While the immeasurable value God places on prayer is evidenced by how much he talks about it in his word. Did you know this? That there are 650 prayers listed in the Bible. That there are over 450 answers to prayer that are listed in the Bible. That the Bible records Jesus praying over 25 times during his earthly ministry. God focuses incredible, incredible attention to the power and the importance of prayer while the church, while believers give it very little attention. And you know what? This is part of the problem we face in abiding in Jesus is that we have really nothing to do with prayer in our lives. Communication with prayer. God in our lives. Here's what I love about the Shema. Do you know that, and I mentioned this just a few minutes ago, that, that a faithful Jew will pray through, you shall love the Lord your God with everything, would pray through it two times a day, in the morning and the evening. You know where most of our prayer happens? At mealtime. Rub-a-dub-dub, thank you for the grub, let's eat, right? That idea happens at prayer. And here's, here's the problem, is that abiding in Jesus, and we've got to understand, is fueled by prayer. But what happens most of the time in our lives is that we, we kind of consider prayer the least of these options and also the last resort when things get really bad. But honestly, here's the truth. Gre- prayer is the, the greatest access to power we have in Christ. And it ought not be our, our last resort. It ought to be our first line of offense. But here's the deal. It's, it's non-existent in many of our lives. Now, once, what's part of the problem with prayer? Well, part of the problem is, is that I love what John Bunyan said. First of all, what, what a rough last name. Anybody's last name Bunyan in the house? I don't want to make fun of this name and it be yours. Okay, here's the deal. What a terrible last name. John Bunyan. Isn't that something you get on your foot? Anyway, hey, listen to what he said. Prayer will make a man cease from sin. Or sin will entice a man to cease from prayer. Isn't that good? A lot of times when it comes to prayer in our lives, you and I just have this sin struggle where, where what we want is kind of placed higher above what God wants. But here's what we understand in Jesus' life, that, that prayer fuels abiding in Jesus. Can I ask you something, students? How's your prayer life, honestly? Outside of rub-a-dub-dub, thank you for the grub, how is, how is your prayer life in your everyday? You know what I find? The disciples ask Jesus, and which is very, you know what, if I had to ask Jesus any question about how to do something, I'd be like, Jesus, how did you walk on water? Think of what question you would ask Jesus about how he did something. Jesus, how did you call Lazarus out of that grave? Jesus, how did you give sight to a blind man? How did you let a, a deaf man hear again? How did you let a lame man walk again? Jesus, how did you call that demon out of that person? You know what the disciples asked Jesus to teach them? Teach us how to pray. These are the dudes that walk with him. And they found that the most powerful thing that Jesus did, and yet the greatest struggle for them was, Jesus, how do we pray? You know what some of us need to do in our journey in abiding in Jesus is simply go like this this weekend. Jesus, teach us how to pray. Because I need Because here's what we realize about prayer. Ready? Where prayer is focused, power falls. Where prayer is focused, the power of God falls. And I'm going to tell you, abiding in Christ is fueled by prayer. But here's what abiding in Christ is also fueled by. You ready? It's powered by His Spirit. So not only is abiding fueled by prayer, but it is powered by His Spirit. Powered by His Spirit. 
You say, well, what do you mean by that? Listen to what Jesus says. And you're to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. And you know what he's doing? He's tackling Every aspect of our existence, the spiritual side of us, the emotional side, the intellectual side of us, the volitional side, or our will. He's he's talking about all, he's tackling all of that. And you know what's amazing? In Jesus, all areas of our lives are under the control and the influence of the Holy Spirit. Listen to how Paul talks it out in Romans chapter 8. It's up on the screen. It says, those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind is governed by the flesh, that is death, but the mind that is governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Guys, let me ask you this. When was the last time you engaged at all with the Holy Spirit of God? You let Him move in your life where you talked with Him. Here's the deal. Abiding in Jesus is fueled by prayer, but it also is powered by the Spirit of God in your life. Here, you know what this is a great reminder of, church? You are not alone when it comes to walking with Jesus. We we feel like this, I need enough Jesus to save me, but when it comes to walking with Jesus, I'm on my own. Here's the deal. The promise is, is that you have the Holy Spirit of God that lives in you, and by faith, you enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, the, the Spirit of God, Romans 8, teaches us, empowers the believer to set their hearts, their soul, and their minds on the things of God, which always lead to obedience to the commandments of God. Let's hear me. Abiding in Jesus reminds us that it is powered by the Spirit and you are not alone. Because honestly, you, some of you came down here last night and said, Jesus, I want to abide in you like I never have before. And honestly, in the back of your mind, you're going, but I don't know that I can do it. And you know what? By yourself, you can't. But abiding is powered by the Spirit of God, and Him in you can do it. And you know what abiding is also? It's not only fueled by prayer, powered by the Spirit of God. It is sustained in your life by the Word of God. I love the Shema, the greatest commandment of all that Jesus would quote. And you know what's amazing? Is that every Jew, no matter their age, Memorize the Shema. They would memorize the word of God. They would speak through it in their every day. And you know what? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, the word of God was to be infused into every area of a believer's life. Look at verse 6 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. And it says this, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. But look at all the extremes of life. When you lie down and when you get up, and all day long, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them down on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Listen, abiding in Jesus is sustained by the word of God in your life. And I don't feel like I'm really abiding in Jesus much. Well, how much are you in here? How much are you really in here? And if you, I, just, I, I just don't know that, that there's a whole lot of abiding going on in my life. Well, how much of your life is influenced by the word of God that you read? Here's what we've got to understand. Abiding in Jesus is an act of faith and a relationship we have with Jesus. But abiding well in Jesus, abiding in such a way that it makes all the difference in the world, just doesn't happen to us. Just doesn't happen to us. Because here's what happens. Many of us are going to leave this weekend and go, man, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to abide in Jesus. And I'm going to let that be fueled by prayer. I'm going to be empowered by his spirit. I'm going to be sustained by his word. I'm going to try. And you know what? Every single one of us in the room are going to die trying. Here's the word we need to start using. You ready? We need to start training. We need to start training. I was involved in a state championship team when I was in high school. I loved it, our football team. And uh, we got to play soccer growing up and part of a good team and won a lot of awards and all this good stuff. You know what's amazing about my soccer and my football career? Is that all of it was a result of the training that I put into it. 
We were not state championship football players because we just laid around and showed up for a game. But because we trained day in and day out. But listen, we didn't win awards in soccer because we just sat, sat around and, and just hoped it would happen to us and just tried. No, we trained every day. Here's the key for every one of us in abiding in Christ. You ready? Is that you need to stop trying and we got to start training. Meaning this, that I'm going to take my faith so important that even when I don't feel like it, Man, I'm going to train in my faith every day because I'm going to let me abiding in Jesus be fueled by prayer, empowered by his spirit, and sustained by the word of God. So you ready? You won't remember much of today's message. This is always the hardest session because, honestly, you are fighting the battle of all battles to stay awake. Remember this part. I'm going to stop trying and I'm going to start training in my faith in Jesus. Early African converts to Christianity. On the continent of Africa, early African converts were known for their devotion to God and their time with Him every day. In fact, what would happen is as a village would come to faith and trust in Christ, villagers would go out into the thicket, would go out into the bush, and they would spend time every day praying and reading God's Word and talking with the Lord, right? They were abiding in Jesus every day, and they were training their faith. Well, they they would go off so often into the thicket in their own place in the bush that there would be little trails that would begin to develop. And you could always see where somebody was going off to meet with God, to abide in Jesus. But what happened is, is what happens so many times with us, right? Life gets busy. Faith becomes normal. And all of a sudden, some of the African converts in, in their village would stop going out into the thicket every day. And they would stop going out and meeting with God and His Word and praying and talking with Him. And literally, grass would begin to grow on their path out into the bush. So you know what the villagers would do to one another? When they saw the grass growing on their path, they would just simply remind somebody else. Hey, listen. There's grass that's growing on your path. And you know what that statement said? Listen, you're, you're not abiding in Him. Like you used to. Hey, here's my question this morning, believer. You ready? Is there is there grass growing on, on your path? Is there, is there grass growing on the path of your everyday life where you are abiding in Jesus, where you are training, where you are stepping aside and saying, you know what? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna spend time talking with him. I'm gonna spend time reading his word. And I'm going to be open to the Spirit of God to move whatever way He wants in my life. Hear me, you and I must make make the promise today to stop trying and start training in our faith. Or grass will grow on our path. And the great struggle of I surrender some will define our lives. We'll never know the full joy of abiding in Jesus. So here's what we're going to do. You ready? I want you guys to take your Bibles. If you don't have one, in the back of the pews, there's some Bibles, I believe, yeah. If you don't have one, that's okay. You can, um, you can use your phone, but if you go to Facebook or social media or try to play a game, I'm going to pray that your phone catches on fire and burns your hand, okay? So you can use it, but I'd rather you have a hard copy if you got it. So here's how we're going to end our time today. No band, no haze, no pretty lights. I want everybody... Get a Bible, find a Bible. Anybody need a Bible real quick? Uh, Hey, listen, if you do, Pastor Dominic, our team will help you get one. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to spread across this room and find a space just by yourself. Don't sit with your friends. Just go by yourself. Right now, everybody, find a space. Find a space. Get up, go every corner of the room. Every corner of the room. And let me teach you how to train real quick. Let me teach you how to train. Everybody find a place away from somebody else. Give yourself a few feet. From some of your partners to kind of spread out all across this room. There we go, spread out. It could be floor, it could be stage, it could be the bathroom. That would be awkward. Everybody kind of spread out. Now, Now listen, abiding in Jesus is not just one moment of your day. Abiding in Jesus is your entire day. It is this open, listen, if abiding is fueled by prayer, it's this open line of communication with Jesus all day. 
If, if abiding is, is empowered by the Spirit of God, it is a conversation with the Spirit of God and an openness to Him throughout your day. If it is sustained by the Word of God, it is, man, when you give free moments in your head to, to think on the Word of God, to celebrate the Word of God that you've been reading, okay? So abiding is not a moment, but it is so important that you and I train to have moments in the busyness of our day to train so that you and I can abide more and more in Jesus. Live in Him more and more. So open your Bibles to the New Testament, to John chapter 15. I read you verse 5. John chapter 15, and I'm going to do something that no D-Now preacher has ever done on the Saturday morning session. I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. Now listen, (laughs) this is going to seem like an eternity for some of you. You are going to wrestle with life and death trying to stay awake. You're going to have to kill bunnies that you're chasing in your mind, right? And rabbits that you're chasing in your... You're going to have to... You're going to have to focus in for five whole minutes. And here's what I want you to do. Let you go to John chapter 15. And in the quietness of this moment, I want you... And, I, and listen, don't start yet because I don't want you to get over five minutes here, okay? But I want you to read through John chapter 15... And I want you to look at what it might be in your life to go, you know what, every day this week, if you're starting from nothing, every day this week, I'm going to put five minutes on the clock. I'm going to clear everything I have off my schedule. And I'm going to give these minutes to Jesus. And you know what's amazing? Five minutes will become nothing. I need 10. I need 15. And I need, I need an hour with Jesus. You know, you know what my quiet times begin to look like in my life? I'm 36 years old, and I need Jesus now more than I ever have. Like, honestly, at times I could spend an hour to an hour and a half with just him and reading his word and praying and not bat an eye and go, man, I, <laughs> I need more time with him. Now, that's not my every day. And some days get crazy busy with my family. But you know what I like to do? Let's just look at verse 1 together, and then I'm putting five minutes on the clock. Jesus said, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. That's the guy who kind of cuts down the vines and keeps them healthy, right? Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may be more fruit. You you know what I would do right there? I would stop and go, hey, Father, would you just help me to bear fruit? God, would you help me to be the, the branch that bears a whole lot of fruit for you? And you know what I'll do is I'll take this entire chapter And when it speaks to me, I'll actually just lift up a prayer. You know, the passage, verse number five, where it said, apart from me, you can do nothing. You know what I do? Every time I get to that, I stop there and I go, Jesus, help me to remember my every day. Apart from you, I am nothing. I can't can't do anything without you. And so what I do is, is, as I read God's word, I pray and I talk with him. And I allow his spirit to move in my heart, to expose my sin, to, to expose my shortcomings. And to lead me to abiding more and more in Jesus, living more and more in Him. So, here's what we got. You ready? Five minutes on the clock. You and Jesus read and pray and listen to Him. I hope you survive. Here we go. So, Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm thankful that no one died in the past five minutes, but that we all lived and learned more through your spirit about your word. And Father, as I read John chapter 15, I was was taken back. And Father, I just pray that you would help us to abide in your love. That Father, that we would know that your joy in us is a joy that is complete and that is made full. And that Father, that you would teach us to abide in our every day, that we would abide in you. That it would be fueled by our conversations, our prayer with you. God, that your spirit would empower our everyday lives to know you more and to abide in you more and more. And that your word would sustain our abiding. Your promises, Father, your teachings, your commandments, Father. They would just sustain our abiding in you every day. And I pray this, that this morning, 
that you would move an entire room of people from trying in their faith to training every day to abiding in you. And I pray, Lord, that you would find us faithfully every day with you. That there be no grass that grows on our path, but that we would find ourselves abiding in you. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you for just a few minutes of just quiet and time with you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.